Okay, let me show you guys why I'm having some trouble here. As you can see, I have engineered this dune buggy engine to fit pretty precisely. I've got it tucked up as close behind the back seats here as I could to bring the center weight of the buggy forward. This is why this buggy handles so well. Because I've got the weight here, I've got the engine balanced to where with one passenger, with the driver in it only, it's a perfect 50-50 split from one side to the other. There's really a lot of fine detail that I put into the way that I put this thing together. Now, never in that plan ever had I anticipated stuffing a supercharger into it. So that obviously is adding some complexity. So what if, what if I just simply mount it like this? What if I mount it to the frame of the buggy? I mean, I'm sure crazier things have been done, right? Gosh, there's just no good solution. So yes, I'm gonna build a platform off this, which this can ride on, It'd be removable. And uh, I think I just got it figured out. Let's do this thing. I think I can get the supercharger done today. It's about 10,000 degrees in my garage right now, so you guys will probably hear my little window air conditioner run in the background. Um, that's just to keep it about 9,000 degrees in the garage. Otherwise, it would just be unbearable in here and I wouldn't be able to get any work done. So, we're gonna get cracking again on the supercharger. Let me show you the progress I've made. I found that the semi-gloss black works best with this frame. So I've got to go pick up some more semi-gloss. I just had like a matte, a matte black to touch this up with. A hey, quick question. Does anybody else's wife come out to the garage like the moment you fire up like the most dangerous tool in your shop? Like, you know, the table saw or the hand saw. I'll have the grinder running or the welder and I'm like blowing sparks everywhere and all of a sudden I hear this like faint voice. The noise is already so loud, my head is spinning and I'm trying not to lose a finger and then I hear this faint voice in the background. Do you want provolone or do you want Swiss? And I'm like, what's going on right now? I'm trying not to lose my focus because I know if I stop cutting at that exact moment, I'll probably take a fingertip off. <laughs> Just like, is it just me or does anybody else's wives do that? Just curious, I'm asking for a friend. And that's gonna kind of be like a belt tensioner because the further I pull this thing in, the tighter that belt gets. So I may or may not do another belt tensioner on this. I don't know right now, we're gonna see how the stock belt holds up but for now that should work all right guys i know it's not pretty but it's what i've got to work with so again this is this is a test setup got our air filter in place here it's perfect fit for i think this is like a one and three quarter inch uh, intake and output off of the actual charger itself i need to get some um, flex i need to change that this is all just temporary just to see if I've created if I can create any boost with this system intercooler is not permanently mounted okay so it shoots across comes down okay. under and through our suspension down across and then way back there tucks into the intake so I think it's a fairly airtight system clamps are all on I tested everything basically back to this clamp and everything from here moving forward was sealed really well, so it should create some boost. Yeah, only one way to find out for sure. Let's fire it up. I think I'm gonna put you guys here.
Okay, well that's it for tonight. I would say it was somewhat successful. It runs definitely with some pressure going to it. Uh, I think, no I know I've got a few leaks here. I'm not really sure what to do about the idle. We've got a lot of boost going to idle that I don't want there when the throttle's fully closed. So like right now, just to get all the charge piping in place, I don't have the blow-off valve installed. So I know that I need to get the blow-off valve in because, yeah. Okay, so now I've managed to get our blow-off valve in line and hooked up with the rest of the system here. Got it hooked into our vacuum line. So I'm gonna see if this setup makes a little bit of a difference. Again, guys, this is not a permanent setup. This is all just for testing. So ignore how ugly this all is here. So uh, a couple of things I've changed. I have idled up my little idle screw a bit, and you can see I'm playing around here with my ignition spark table. At 7500 RPM, I've got 28 degrees of ignition. At 4100, I'm running about 23 degrees. And then as our boost pressures increase, 150 kPa, 4100, I'm down to 18 degrees. On the top end at 200, I'm down to 13 degrees. I don't think I'm gonna be anywhere near this 200. That would be, I think, about 15 pounds of boost. So we shouldn't be anywhere near that, hopefully. This is gonna be the tricky one, is setting up the fuel table. I almost wish the blow-off valve was just a little bit more sensitive, though. I don't think the blow-off valve that I have is gonna be adjustable. Um, it's just this style. Uh, they had an older one where there was an adjustment screw, but as far as I'm aware, this one is non-adjustable. This works really well, but anybody that's considering an AMR500, you need to know these things are unbelievably noisy. Uh, I've got the earplugs in, and my ears are still ringing. That's how loud these AMRs are. So for that reason alone... If you have an open setup like this, you may not be able to run an AMR. At the end of the day, I don't think I'm gonna be able to run this because it's going to absolutely require hearing protection every time I bring it out, which is a big, you know, downside. So far, fuel pressure seems to be okay. There's quite a bit of headroom in these injectors, guys. On these Mitsubishi Mirage engines, these injectors are rated to about 220 cc. So there is about a 25 to a 30% uh, headroom with those injectors, which is great for this kind of setup. We're definitely getting boost pressures. We've got way too much happening at idle. I think we can solve that problem by going to a larger pulley. That setup right now is running a 2.3 to 1 is the ratio that I'm currently running, which is really high. I'd have seen a few guys fail using these AMR 500s on their automobile engines because they were not turning enough RPM to move the air volume needed to create boost on a higher efficiency engine. This being a triple, I should not have that problem. Also, this being only a 1.2 liter, I should not have that problem. It sounds healthy, it sounds, sounds stout. We just gotta figure out this noise thing. That's the number one thing that's gonna be holding me back on this system. Uh, I may have to go to a different centrifugal style. Don't know that I'm gonna be able to run the root style. They're very noisy. What is up, people? We are going for a little test run here now that I've got pressure going through our intercooler and into our little Mitsubishi Mirage 1.2 liter triple. Um, what I will say initially, first of all, it's unbearably noisy. So I don't know ultimately that I'm gonna be able to keep this system just for the sheer fact that it is ear bleeding loud. Um, and so is, the, so is the blow off valve. So uh, ear protection is an absolute must when riding the buggy and you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not the end of the world. I do see some sunlight peeking through the clouds over here. Yeah, right over there. So hopefully this won't last too long. Um, and it does appear like the sun is gonna come out here pretty soon. Of course, I'm gonna get soaking wet no matter what because these trails out here, uh, if you can see that, but they have a lot of standing water. So these trails get soaked. So I'm not gonna be running very quickly, but that's probably a good thing. That's probably like a speed controller. Okay, 
I don't know if you'll be able to hear me over this uh, supercharger. It's pretty flipping loud. But we are running. We are making boost. Alright guys, I just checked the laptop, hooked everything up, my fueling appeared to be okay. Um, it's definitely running rich, even when I stab the throttle it's still running rich. Um, without load it's like 11 to 12 AFR, so under load that's probably a real life 13, 13 and a half AFR. Absolutely making pressure, we're making boost. Over 100 kPa means that we are pressurizing that throttle body. Uh, my goal was about 150 kPi, um, which should translate to just under 7 psi if I'm doing the math correctly. So let's try this one more time. 